Hey, what's up, guys? I'm going to get back into making more videos. And so here's a tool one. Do you got a bunch of Ryobi batteries like I do? Because look at this. They call it the power source, and it uses Ryobi 18 volt 1 plus batteries. First, I'm going to use it, and then I'm going to do some pros and cons and tell you about the problems I've had so far with it. And then I'll finish by cracking it open so we can see what's inside. Stay tuned. How can you use it? You can use it like this. Here I am in my shed, and this is one of those Sam's Club LED light bar things that they sell. It's pretty bright, and it'll stay on uh, for a couple hours on this 9 amp hour battery. Yep. Christmas lights? It, get it done. Duh. How about a car battery charger, like a 12 volt battery charger? And some of them, actually, yes. I can use uh, this one, uh, but not this one at the 50 amp start setting, but uh, at the 10 and 2 amp, yeah. And I've run it at the 10 amp setting for about an hour and everything was okay. That mobile haircut? Yeah, get it done, do it. Charge a USB brick? I mean, I guess so, yeah. Is there a battery to charge a battery? Okay, a coffee maker, no! Again, that's way too many watts. It's like a fridge. No, don't do it. Power strip? Well, I mean, yeah, but it doesn't use power, really. This scooter? Yes, because it only pulls 70 watts while it's charging, and this 9 amp hour battery can put over 6 miles into the scooter. Not bad. And so, yeah, an electric scooter. What about an electric car? No! Again, there's just way too many watts. Plus, there's a neutral floating ground or something, so it wouldn't even... No, just no. Okay, what about a laptop, though? This is iffy. So my gaming laptop can pull 280 watts according to the adapter when it's going like full blast. But under normal light use, uh, it only draws about 30 to 100 watts. So the answer is yes for web browsing or word processing, but no for full on gaming or like video editing or anything like that. But a solid yes uh, for smaller laptops like this Chromebook. And I've got a review of that in the eye in the corner of the screen. So, yep. If your electronics use less than 150 watts, then this thing should work. Okay, let's do some pros and cons. Pro, it's compact. It fits in your hand easily, and it's got a grip. It's grippy. But there's a con, is it feels cheap. It's super light, which I guess is a pro, but I don't think it's built like the power tools. Like I wouldn't feel comfortable dropping this on the ground or anything. Yeah. Pro, it has a cooling fan. But a con is that the fan doesn't seem to work in any sort of regularity or have much like airflow. It does turn on, but it can get over 120 degrees Fahrenheit and not turn on, but other times it'll start at that temperature or below. Pro, it's got a light, and that's great for times of darkness. Ooh, a con with that. So the light doesn't seem to be for you to be able to plug anything in in the dark because if it's like facing you, it projects almost directly into your eyes. A really strong beam. It's really weird. Uh, so you got to like block it with your hands or something because it's, it's blinding. Uh, Pro, it uses one plus batteries. And if you've already got a bunch of those, then that's great. And if you don't, uh, sometimes they're on sale for a decent price. Hmm, con. You'll run through the small one plus batteries pretty quick if you're using a decent amount of power but ooh pro this 9 amp hour battery that they make now it can run for about 45 minutes at nearly full peak wattage yeah it's nice so a possible con though is the uh, ac or alternating current that this device produces i'm unable to test to see if it's a pure sine wave versus like modified or square sine wave but it's likely not pure sine wave ac they would probably be posting that on their packaging and stuff being very proud of that. So it may be a good idea to be careful with sensitive electronics and not plug them into this. For instance, some of my electronics make a sound when they're plugged into this, but not my house. Con, the power button. Though it's easy to operate, it's a little too sensitive for my liking. So if you are mobile with it and have it in like the back of your car, for example, and you take a turn and then it rolls over and hits something, it may shut off or turn on. Or uh, Pro, the button is that it illuminates. It's red when the battery's getting low and it's easy to see from a distance. It's green when everything's fine. Yeah, and using the battery gauge on the battery, it, it doesn't affect the operation of anything, so that's okay, right? And the biggest pro, if you get it, you've got a portable outlet. And that is convenient compared to not having a portable outlet. Okay, the biggest con for me so far is that the USB ports just stop working. 
And I, I've had two of these power sources so far. And uh, the first one, the USB ports failed within minutes. And I was just charging my phone and it was drawing about an amp. And then it just failed. Uh, and then plugging in a USB cord, it wouldn't do anything at all. Uh, except occasionally it would turn on the light, which is really weird because it wasn't applying pressure to the light, the light button or anything, but yeah. And then after about a week of not using it, I tried using the USB ports again and the phone would recognize that there was voltage, uh, but it, there was no current. So it was not charging. Uh, so like things would plug in and like beep boop and stuff that just wouldn't charge. And I tried with several electronics uh, and, and several different USB cords and it just, it failed. And I can most accurately measure this with my AccuBattery app on my phone. And just, there was no positive flow of current. And I just, yeah. There finally might be like a pro with this con uh, for you to consider, I guess. Uh, so a person from Ryobi saw a review that I wrote on Home Depot's website highlighting the issue and they reached out to me uh, to replace the thing. And that was nice. And I commend them for being on top of the customer service, but the replacement unit did the exact same thing. And not even an hour into use, of the USB ports stopped working. So it is possible that this the USB problem is rare, uh, but just be advised. It's an issue I've had, and some reviews online as well show that. So, yeah. But anyway, congrats. You survived the PC list. So let's crack this piece open. Okay, so here I am taking it apart. There's four screws holding it together. They're just regular Phillips screws. And then there's a sticker on top that holds the two halves of the case together and, and then it just like cracks apart and there's not a whole lot going on inside uh, there's this fan I was talking about earlier it's more like an afterthought there's no like shrouding on the inside or anything and yep they just threw a couple PC boards with some parts on them the buttons are just uh, you know slid in from the sides as well uh, whoever designed it you know they spent probably a good day on just throwing this in a CAD program of some sort and just putting it together. Uh, yeah, just because I can, I'm just going to chuck this on a battery and press some buttons. Ooh, there's the lights. You can see they're just surface-mounted LEDs. And uh, they they are at some sort of frequency that makes the camera uh, show it as if it's pulsing, which it's not. And here I am giving it like a Vulcan stare, trying to fix it with my stare because those USB ports just aren't working. I can't see anything wrong with, with the board. There's a little bit of like buildup uh, on some of the solder pads, sort of. Uh, there's no parts that seem to be blown out that I can tell. There is uh, that fuse right there to the right. It's a 25 amp fuse. I think it's 12 volts. It might be uh, running the 120 volts. I, I don't know. There's, there's a look at a lot of the, the parts. Uh, 80 bucks is about what I spent on this thing. Uh, it was part of like a buy one get one uh, program if you got the batteries uh, and I eventually bought those and got the soldering iron with that mm, but yeah uh, don't expect those USB ports to work and I think you'll be satisfied uh, I've run it uh, with a printer for a while that was good and also I had some Christmas lights in the car uh, ran for hours that was good so I have used this thing quite a bit uh, just the USB ports don't really work out so yeah all right, tell me what you think about this thing. Would you buy one? Have you? Has it been working okay? Let me know. And uh, anyway, yeah, I hope that helped. See you later, Internet.